Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So, last summer I did a load of courses, eBay related courses, on a site called Skillshare. And now I've decided to migrate those courses over from that website to YouTube. So there's going to be loads of different beginner courses that are going to be coming over here uh, for you guys to view on this YouTube channel. So with that being said, the next video you're going to, uh, going to see is obviously one of those courses. Um, so yeah. Hope you enjoy. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to my how to list an item on eBay course. So basically before we just jump straight into this, I'm not going to patronize you and explain what eBay is and how it works and all that sort of stuff. I'm sure you'll now be aware of what eBay is, the selling platform on a whole, all that sort of stuff. But if you haven't created an account yet, maybe what you would like to do is first create an account with eBay before watching this course uh, and then you can follow along with the course um, in more detail. So what are you going to learn in this course? Well, over a multitude of videos, you will be learning how to effectively list an item on eBay, create a listing, do the research, the photography, um, how to title correctly, how to do a description, how to set up postage charges and, and things like that. So you're going to learn a load of different things in this one course. Now, if you don't understand anything, if you don't understand anything in the course, you can basically either go back and re-watch it and see if you see if it sort of soaks in better that time or you can contact me. I will be putting some links on my bio on Skillshare um, so that then you can actually contact me with any sort of queries or questions you may have about anything you've seen here in the course. So I am Adam Robinson, if you don't know. I've been selling on eBay for three years and I was also selling before that. However, because I was a lot younger then, I didn't class that as my kind of professional career on eBay. Uh, and three of the years I've been selling, uh, over the past two years, I've actually been full-time on eBay. Uh, and I've sold, I believe it's over 5,000 items now on eBay, which is pretty crazy. Um, and I'm a top rated seller. Um, I believe I'm, I've got a power seller level as well, or a power seller badge. And I am obviously within the UK, if you can't tell from my accent. Um, so if you are in the US, some of these things might be slightly different. Or if you're in another country, it might be slightly different. But hopefully you'll get some value out of this course. So let's just jump right, right into it. First off, I'll show you uh, maybe how to do some research and then we will get on and actually create a listing. So I hope you enjoy the course. As I say, any questions, please do contact me in, in my bio. So I'll leave it there, guys, and I'll see you in the next segment. Right, guys, so what I've done is I've actually searched the item that I have chosen. So I've actually chosen to list this item here with you guys today. Um, it is a... Uh, advent an adventurous spirit davenport limited edition plate um and as you can see i've just typed uh, typed in the search bar there davenport william plate and you don't necessarily need to string out a really really long search term because that might refine your search down too much and you might not be able to find the item so i always do quite a broad search of maybe two three four words and then it pulls up the maximum amount of results that is possible really so as you can see we've got a few here that are listed and this is listed these haven't sold yet um at about 14.99 15.99 and we've got a few here for 25 and, and you can see the same one i've got is listed for 25 pound 50 but how do we know that that price is achievable well you actually have to click the sold listings down here on the left hand side so i'm just going to do that now and as you can see with this example, this is actually a tough example I've chosen because there aren't any sold listings. So we don't know how well this item sells, how well this item actually sells. So we don't know like whether this is a, a really infrequent seller and that these people are pricing too high or whether it will sell eventually. It's just kind of looking for a right buyer. So with something, if I type in something very easy, like for example lego just to give you an example of something easy so we've got this lego set here lego ninjago 7601 so if i type in that set number there 
and pull up sold listings, you can see that it gives us all the prices of all the most recent sold listings. So we know that we can quite comfortably attain about £20 for this set if it was brand new. Uh, if you look down here, again, we've got one for 28 quid. So maybe you could attain a little bit more than £20 for this set if it was brand new. But with something like this plate, um, again, I'll just type in William uh, Davenport plate. With something like this plate, it's not as easy to determine the price because there's not any sold listings. Now, what I can see in this situation, if there are a lot of them listed um, and none have sold, generally that can that might be able to tell us that either people are listing them a little bit too high, and therefore if the prices came down a little bit, you might be able to get you might be able to actually catch a sale there, or maybe there is just no interest in the item. The only way to determine that is by actually listing your item and just seeing whether obviously whether uh, maybe a lower price would work and actually catch a sale for you. So you can see I've actually run a slightly different search here and I've got up other results, even more different results. So it's always worth, uh, when you're doing your research, doing different searches as well. And, and then obviously clicking down here in the left hand corner to your sold listings and seeing if that pulls up any different sold listings and any different current listings as well. And you can base your price. I would always base my price on sold listings, not current listings, because sold listings we know have sold for that price and a customer has bought that item for that specific price. Current listed items, we don't know whether they're ever going to sell. So that is how you do basic research on eBay. That is all the research you need to do. You can type in whatever it is you've got. If, if you've got, for example, a, um, I don't know, some sort of speakers. So you've got some Sony speakers. You can type in Sony speakers, and if you've got a little brand, uh, sorry, a model number on those speakers, you could then type in the model number, and then obviously refine by sold listings down here, which I've already done, and you'll be able, that that search will pull up all of that model number and all the sold results. Also, if you want to list it on Buy It Now only, you can filter the sold results by Buy It Now or by auction, depending on which format you're choosing to list over. I generally do buy it now, but I do do some things on auction as well. Generally, I've just been more of a buy it now seller recently anyway. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just sort of personal preference, really. But whatever format you choose, that's completely up to you. Uh, and then you can obviously see all the different solds. If you were to type in a model number, you can see all those different solds of all, for, 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 basically for all that model number. So really, really easy. It's not as hard as you think. So with this William Davenport plate, I'm just going to very, very quickly go back onto that and then we will actually get on to listing the item. So with this one, if there were a list of solds here coming in at maybe £10, £15, something like that, I would have no trouble. I would list it at between £10 and £15 plus my postage. But because there aren't any, and there are quite a lot listed, if I've just gone on to completed listings there. Also, yeah, that's a good note, actually. If you click completed listings, that will show you the listings that haven't sold, but that have run out of their time limit. So if they've been on for 30 days on Buy It Now, if you click completed listings, it will show you the listings that didn't actually sell within that time period. So that's actually quite good as well. If there aren't any sold listings to look at, you can see that these haven't actually sold for £30, £15, £15 there. So really, based on the information that I've got and my sort of little bit of experience I've got, I would really be pricing this at about £10, maybe even a little bit less because it just doesn't seem to sell even for that £15 level. So then maybe it's just a waiting game and just seeing, you know, hopefully the right customer comes along, sees yours at the lower price and then ends up buying yours. So. If there was solds there, then I could do a little bit better pricing. But obviously there isn't, so I've got to base I've got to 
got to base a, de a decision off my own experience level really. So that is all you need to know for research, it's very very easy, very very basic. We're going to get on and actually list the item now and I'm going to split the listing process into about two, three or four videos for you so you don't get overwhelmed with information. So I will see you in the next segment. Right then guys, so we are now ready to create our eBay listing. So you might be wondering how did I get on this page? Well, basically I'll just show you that very quickly in a new tab. So you can see here at the top left hand corner, you come to sell, so you wanna click sell there. And then it will, depending on whether you've got a personal account or a business account, I've got a business account, so I have the seller hub. Um, it will then take you to the seller hub and you can go over here to create a listing. Um, and then you can just click single listing. You can do multiple listings at once. And what you will, what you can do if you want to do a multiple listing at once is it'll take you to the first page, the main listing page, as you will see in a minute. And you can enter the number of listings you want to create at the top of a page. And then on that first page, you can enter in all the same details for the 10 listings. So, for example, if you did 10 listings. So, um, if you did 10 listings that all had the same uh, bl you know, blanket postage cost, you could put in that postage cost there. And maybe they all have the same brand, so you put in the same brand name. And then... After that page, you can go through and put in the unique information for each of the listings. And in one way, it can speed up the listing process. However, I don't really use that even as a professional seller. I find just the single listing option more than quick enough. So I'm just going to use that today. Uh, for you. So we want to create listing, single listing, and then you can see I'm at that page. So I'm just going to actually go back and basically you might be thinking, right, we've got to input a title here. So what do we do for a title? Well, if you would like, you can go, for example, we typed in that William Davenport plate. So we can type that in again and we can get a little bit of inspiration from other people's titles. We don't want to copy. We don't want to blatantly uh, you know, plagiarize titles or photos, never do that. It's against eBay policy to do that. And I will be doing a course in future um, based around eBay policy and what not to do kind of thing. But what we can do is we can kind of get inspiration from these titles. So, and also we can look at our item here and we can look on the back at some of the writing and we can sort of use that as inspiration for the title as well. So first off, I can see the... It looks like this is a vintage plate. It doesn't have a, um, it doesn't actually have, um, you know, a year on it. Or so sometimes it'll say like copyright 2005 or something like that. But I'm gonna put this as vintage. It might. No, I'm actually not gonna put this as vintage because it, I'm on the fence about it now. But we'll put, we'll just put uh, limited edition or collectible, um, Davenport. Always put the brand name in there, so or Davenport Collectible, something like that. So cut that there, put that there. Davenport Collectible, an adventurous spirit, because that's the uh, actual name of the plate. So an adventurous, an adventurous, uh, where are we here? Adventurous spirit, an adventurous spirit, uh, limited edition. collectible limited maybe cut that out and it does take a bit of rearranging to do your title and getting your keywords right and making the title have a little bit of flow so Davenport an adventure an adventurous spirit and I'm just gonna put those there like that uh, limited edition collectible yeah we want collectible in here actually that's better um, uh, William uh, people's Prince And then we could put something like ceramic plate. Now I might be going over my characters there, but don't worry because we want to pad the title out as much as we can. We want to pack in as many keywords to that title as we can, as we can to get that item found, to get as many eyeballs on it as we can. So we've got Davenport and Adventurous Spirit, uh, limited edition, collectible, uh, William People's Princess ceramic plate. So we're just going to click, uh, yeah, just click get started. Um, and then it will create the actual draft. So as you can see, we did go over uh, the characters there. So I think collectible doesn't do much for the title. So I'm gonna 
withdraw collectible out of that and just put plate. So Davenport and Adventurous Spirit, limited edition, William William the People's Ooh yeah, I'm gonna William's People's Prince. Will it let me just put Williams the People's Prince plate? Yes, that's cool. And we've used all but one of our characters in the title so that's really good we've got a nice strong padded out title we've got the name in there we've got the brand in there we've got the fact that it's limited edition and we've got obviously uh, the, the sort of person who is on the plate in there as well so really nice padded out title there now you can put in a subtitle for £1.20 I never do this some people do it I don't know whether it gives your listing more of a boost or anything like that, but for £1.20 per listing, I'm not doing that, especially at a £10 item. Maybe if it was a £100 item, £50 item, something like that, I might consider it, but I've never really done it in the past. So, uh, Also, you can put a custom label here, uh, and I believe that's for if you want to sort of track your inventory. Now, I don't actually do that. I don't do the custom label, but... Feel free to do that if you would like to. You can put anything in there, any sort of like a... I think some people um, have a sort of alphanumerical system that they use and they'll put a number or a set of numbering letters in there. Uh, and then we want categories. Now, the good thing with eBay is um, these days it suggests the category quite well. So, um, obviously here, just going off the title, eBay has made a suggestion that this one's going in collectibles, royalty collectibles, Prince, William and Harry. And I think that's quite a good fit. Obviously, the other suggestion we've got is collectibles, decorative ornaments and plates, collector's plates. Now, if you don't like that fit, if you don't think that that's a good fit, you can actually, I think it's just search categories, and then you can look up a category and then add the category, um, or it might actually be browse category. Uh, was it, yeah, browse categories there either as well. And yeah, this this is the one I'm more used to. So you can actually just choose it, like you can go in health and beauty and then refine it down into a single category. You can pay for extra categories as well. You can add a second category, but as you can see there, fees may apply. And then you can put it, if you've got a shop, I've got a shop. I've uh, had a, I'm on the uh, second level shop, which is a featured shop. I've been on there for a while. But unfortunately, I've not um, sorted my shop categories out for a long time. So that is actually something I need to update. And so we're just going to leave that as other. But you can actually put it in a category within your shop. So you can create a, uh, once you've created a shop, you can actually create a specific, ca a specific categories for your shop. So people can browse your shop a lot more easily. So we're just going to leave that in other. And also you can create a variation listing if you would like. If you've got like uh, multiple variations of a similar item, you can create basically a listing that has a drop down menu and that can that people can choose the specific um, item out of a set number of items that are very similar. One thing that comes to mind is trading cards or top trumps or something like that. If you have like certain variants of trading cards, then you can put it all on one multi-variation listing. Um, but we don't need to do that for, for this one anyway. Uh, you can list all of them in one multiple quantity, fixed price listing. But as I say, it's an individual item, this one, we don't need to do that. Um, now the condition we want to specify as used, um, obviously you can look at uh, eBay's sort of definition for a used item, but if the item is not in its brand new packaging, brand new and sealed or brand new and uh, obviously packaged up, if there is anywhere or anything on the listing, uh, sorry, on the, on the actual item, do please list it as used because you might... Um, you you might come into trouble if you list it as new. So if there's even if it's brand new and sealed and there's dents or tears in the packaging, do list it as used because obviously eBay specify that a new item is a brand new, unused, undamaged item. So this one is used. Obviously, it's not got its box. It's not brand new in its box or anything like that. And then we can put a condition description. I would highly advise you do this because. If uh, when you do this on a mobile, uh, they will actually see the condition description or the condition note before they see the actual description. So you can type in here um, collectible plate, uh, Davenport plate, um, plate, uh, used condition. And then, obviously, because it's a ceramic, 
people will want to be aware that there's no chips or cracks or anything like that. So I like to put upon inspection, no chips or cracks were found. And obviously, um, again, that, get, that leads on to the next segment. So what I'm going to do is end this segment here. And then in the next segment, we're going to go through photography and also actually cleaning, prepping, things like that. I'm just going to talk to you about that. Um, and obviously, you should be able to, to do that no trouble. So, yeah, I will see you in the next segment. So, I now wanted to talk to you about photography and also cleaning, prepping, testing your items. So, if you'd like to get the most amount of money out of your items, it obviously makes sense that you would test anything that needs testing, that you would clean anything that needs cleaning, and do the prep work that's involved. So, if you would like to sell something, if you'd like to sell, for example, a radio on eBay, you can sell it as untested and specify that it is being sold for parts or spares only. But, um, if you'd like to get a lot of money out of it or you would like to get more money out of it, then you should be testing that item to actually uh, be able to say that it's in used condition because a used condition item, need, if it isn't electrical, it needs to be working or needs to be functioning in the way it should be. So, obviously, this I can't really give all details on how to test everything in the world because obviously it depends what you get but if you've got a radio or something like that if, you, if you've got a VHS player or a DVD player obviously you know you'll need things like SCART leads on standby um, if maybe you pick a DVD player up and it doesn't have a SCART lead you'll need a SCART lead to test it and then obviously sell it I generally sell my DVD players with the SCART leads obviously if you're picking these kind of things up to sell you'll need to make sure they have the remote and things like that with them as well um, but things like VHS players DVD players they're not too hard to test you should be able to kind of work that out on your own there's plenty of YouTube videos and things like that on various different models uh, for testing various different things obviously in terms of um, actually cleaning items uh, you, you can be using baby wipes you can be using antibacterial wipes um, you can be you know cleaning things in terms of uh, with hot water and stuff like that if that item is not going to get damaged or harmed by doing so uh, obviously fairy liquid or anything like that you know uh, washing up liquid but basically just clean your items test them as you see fit before you photograph them then what I'm going to do right now is actually just do a cut for a little a little second uh, to a clip that I did of my photography setup. So obviously now you should be able to see that setup. It's just a couple of lights and obviously you can see the item on the photography area there. So hopefully you'll be back with me now. And um, yeah, basically that is my setup. So I have a couple of large boards of white melamine. And I have two large pho photography lights, which you can get on eBay for around £30. So it's not that expensive, really. And that setup is really, really good. It looks really, really good on the photos. And I'm really happy with it. And obviously, next to me right now, that's what's lighting this green screen as well, those lights. So you can see the lights are very, very good. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend you do that. However, if you haven't got a photo area, you're very, very new, don't worry, I didn't have a professional photo area three years ago. I was just making do with a good wooden surface, you know, a nice, clean wooden surface and just the natural lighting. Anywhere in your house, you have nice natural lighting and you can get a nice little wooden surface or even if you've got laminate flooring or something like that. Even if you haven't, if you've got a carpet, you can do it on there. Obviously, it just looks a little bit more professional, in my opinion, on wooden, on a wooden floor or on a wooden sort of side table top or something like that. Um, but yeah, so don't worry too much about that. Obviously, you want to do your prep, you want to do your testing and all that sort of stuff. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, and then, obviously, once you've done that and your items are nice and clean, all tested, maybe any wires or cable tied just to make them look a bit more professional on the photos, you then get on and do the photos. So we're now going to go back onto the screen capture software. 
and I'm going to talk to you about the photography and then maybe the description and then we will cut again and we will do another segment in a bit. So I will uh, cut over right now. Right, so we are back on the screen, screen capture software. You can see we've just finished the condition description. I'm actually just going to remove that collectible Davenport plate because it's not really needed in there. It's already in the title, so I'm just going to do that. And we want to come down here to photos, and you can add up to 12 photos for free. Sometimes I do that, but more, more than likely, I'll add four or five or maybe six. Um, now, I would suggest if it's a complex item that you do add maybe 12 photos but for a plate like this how many angles can you actually get of it before people just start getting bored of looking at the photos really there's there's no need to do 12 photos on an item like this so i'm just going to click add photos and it will pull up your sort of um your, your sort of documents and folders. I have a folder for eBay specifically, and then I'm just gonna select all of these and then open them all at once. So that always saves time. You don't have to be opening them uh, one by one, which can get a little bit tedious. Now, unfortunately today, I was using my photography lights for lighting this green screen. So I did this photo, these photos without using my photography lights. So if they do look a little bit dull to you, that is why. But obviously when I actually have the phot photography light set up, they, the photos are much better than this. So as you can see, I just did a normal standard. I mean, the photos are okay, to be honest, but I just did a normal standard photo there. You can actually edit your photos. You can crop them here. So let's just say I want this cropped a little bit, like sort of like that. That's, that's all right. And then we just want to click save there and then obviously it saves and it crops the photo. Um, you can see you can rotate the photos as well, but I'm not bothered about rotating that because that is already in the correct position and you can touch up your photos and all that sort of stuff auto adjust it adjust the brightness all that all that sort of stuff and sharpen the photo i don't generally do any of that um and i actually still use my camera phone uh, obviously that is something i didn't mention about photography i know a lot of uh, professional sellers who use cameras and that's perfectly fine. However, I've always found that the camera phone is, is, is okay. So if you have a phone like an iPhone, I've got an iPhone 5S, if you have even better than that, or you have obviously, a, you know, a Galaxy S7 or what, you know, Samsung phones or anything, they'll do the job perfectly fine. And I know that a lot of sellers, uh, professional sellers and amateur sellers use their camera phone as well as both professional and amateur sellers use cameras as well. So it really depends on your preference. And then I've just done one of the back here. You can see the photo isn't as good with without my photography lights. It's not it's not the best. I'm just going to leave that as it is. I've done one of a close up of the actual sort of little um writing on the back there and i'm actually going to just uh, flip that around because it's in the wrong position so i'll just save that there i might also crop it as well because it looks a little bit yeah i think i'll crop it to uh, about, about here sort of thing i want it i want them to get a good look at the at the text there and be able to read all of it or at least most of it you can see that i, I don't, oh yeah, I can click to enlarge it here. You can see we can read all that text. It's a decent enough photo, an adventurous spirit, that sort of stuff, lovely. So I'm really, really happy with that. And then what I do on ceramic items or on jugs or pots, I also, I didn't mention this, but I also sell mainly ceramics, antiques, collectibles. So a lot of those items need actually uh, measuring because obviously they are things like plates and things like that and people want the measurements. So I always do a photo with um, obviously the di diameter of a plate um, with the tape measure there and you can see it's not anything fancy, it's just a normal basic tape measure and you can see it's 24 centimeters in diameter or just below. So yeah, quite happy with that one. Uh, nice little photos in there, that's all you need to do. Obviously you need to uh, transfer them to your computer off your phone or your camera and then just upload them from the folder that you have them in. So yeah, that's just the photos there. So eBay is now recommending item specifics. Uh, they really do push this and many professional sellers believe that the more item specifics you actually put in, um, the better basically. They want you to put in more, more item sp specifics and people do believe that it actually helps rank your items or helps boost your items up the search results. So here are some of the item specifics. These are different from basically any 
uh, you know, for every different item in different categories, you're going to get more or less item specifics. So type. So what's this type? Well, plates would be the type, wouldn't it? So we're just going to add plates there. Uh, manufacturer is Davenport, so I'm going to see if that's on there. No, it isn't. So you can enter your own. If it's not on there, just enter your own. Davenport, so I'm going to do that. Royal Reign, well, I'm assuming that would be Elizabeth II, even though it's a William uh, plate. And I'm going to enter my own, because I don't... Was, it, was this a birthday plate? I don't think it was a birthday plate, was it? Was it a birthday plate? No, it doesn't look like it was a birthday plate, I don't think. This plate is officially listed for trading number. No, it doesn't look like it was a birthday plate, so I'm just going to put command with, command with, uh, to commemorate William. Just put that in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then obviously it's like an official release. Um, is it an official release? Is in the official limited edition? Yeah. So I'm going to put official official release. Tick that on the features. Country, do, does it say where it was made? I'm guessing it was the UK anyway. I'm pretty sure if it was Davenport, it would be the UK. So I'm going to put, um, going to scroll down to United Kingdom if it'll let me. There we go, United Kingdom. And then I'm not going to add any more features. That's fine there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to add any more features. That's okay there. And then we come on to the item description. So what I'm going to do actually is pause the this segment here and then we'll go on to the item description and hopefully as well after that uh, the postage and then finally the last little few bits that we need to do before we actually create the listing and submit it. Right then guys, so we are now on the item description where we la left off last time. So what I do is I come up here to the title, I copy and paste that and then I paste it into the item description. And I don't actually put that much in the item description these days. You can go all out and you can do a massive description. That is fine if you would like to. However, I sell things day in, day out. Generally, I can sell between five and eight items a day quite comfortably just using this little, you know, very, very simple little description. Uh, obviously, what I do is try and let the photos do the talking. Just obviously, people can see the item. People know what they're going to get. So it, it doesn't need a massive description. You can also copy and paste that in there to make your life easier. Because after all, you know, this is a, let's say we're going to list this for £10. We need to be listing multiple items a day to be able to get any sort of income from this. So we don't want to be spending half an hour, an hour on one listing. Generally, I'll spend about 10 minutes on a listing, especially if it's a £10 item, maybe even less. But if it's a more expensive item, maybe it's a £100 item, I might put a good couple of paragraphs in this description, really highlighting everything that I can. But what I'll do, obviously, I've just put used condition, upon inspection, no chips or cracks were found. Um, obviously, um, made by Davenport, something like that. Um, import uh, sort of royalty collectible plate. And you don't need more than that, really, because as I say, they can see... Uh, they can see in the, t uh, in the photos that it's in good condition. They can see all they need to see. They can see as well, this is why it's important of doing a photo of the back because the description, that takes all that information out of your hands in terms of having to write it in the description. They can see that information without me having to write all of that down in the description. So essentially that actually covers part of your description, which is kind of a nice way of getting out of a little bit more work. You don't have to do as much work. So it's all about working smart with eBay and trying to figure out ways where you don't have to actually put you know, loads and loads of descriptive uh, things into the description or the title and all that sort of stuff. But obviously, I would suggest you do a good long title to obviously get those keywords in and obviously that will help rank your item better. So really, that is it. That's all I would do for a description. Sometimes I'll like bold the title bit a little bit so it just gives it a little bit of emphasis on that, that that title there but as you can see there's nothing more that really needs to be said they can see everything about the item so that's that really and obviously you want to just click on standard not html because that's obviously written in html so uh, you can choose the format down here so this is the selling details we're on to now so i'm going to choose fixed price however you can choose auction if you would like 
and I always go with 30 days. I don't go with good till cancelled because if you go with good till cancelled, the listing doesn't get renewed. So when that listing will end at 30 days, when I relist it, the listing will get renewed. And if I actually choose sell similar instead of relist, the listing will get a new identification number. And then that will actually mean that eBay rank it in search. Or this, well, this is a theory. This is a theory by other sellers. But the theory goes that if you do choose sell similar after the item has ended... Um, it will eBay will then give it more of a boost up the search results again. However, if you just choose good till cancelled, um, then obviously that listing just sits there and sits there and sits there. And again, the theory goes that if you choose good till cancelled, the listing will go further and further down the search results over a period of time. So I'm just going to choose the 30 days like that. You can choose 10 days, 7 days, whatever. Just be aware that every time that item goes off and you need to relist it, there may be a fee involved. So obviously you want to get a good amount out of it. Obviously the, the bonus about Good Till Cancelled is the, the fees really. So yeah, although it does kind of renew itself after 30 days anyway, Good Till Cancelled is basically a 30 day listing, but that automatically renews itself without you actually even knowing about it. So yeah, anyway, so that's, I'm just going to choose 30 days uh, and I'm going to put start my listings when I submit them. You can put a scheduled start and I believe for personal sellers there might be a fee there, but for my business, for my shop subscription, I don't believe there is a fee if I choose the seven day option. So I'm not going to schedule them anyway. And I'm going to put buy it now price of 9.95 because as we worked out in the research, and again, if you would like to do research while you're pricing your item just open up another tab and do some research there and then save you having to remember what price you were thinking it was selling for i'm going to go 995 i know other people have got them on for a lot higher but because of the lack of sold listings um i don't think this is going to be a very great seller so i'm going to go in quite low and hopefully that'll entice a customer uh, into my listing rather than someone else's um, now, I wouldn't normally be so aggressive with the way I compete on price. However, as I say, with this particular example, it's generally just because there's no sold listings. If there was sold listings coming in at, you know, £15 and they were quite regular, I wouldn't need to compete. I would just price in line with everyone else at £15. But because there's no sold listings, I feel I need to compete on price a little bit to win that customer when they actually come to search that term. So I'm just going to put 995. I'm not going to put best offer on. Best offer is basically where people are allowed to make offers on your items. And I have got some shocking best offers in the past from, you know, £2, £3 on a £20 item. So it does annoy me if I put best offer on. But that being said, I do have best offer on a lot of my items. So uh, because obviously if you've, you've, you're getting slow sales one day, um, then, you know, that best offer might be a godsend really it might think oh i've got a best offer to accept so i'll accept that and then you know you know you might save yourself from having a slow day one day and you might get more income through the door just from having best offer on don't worry about this vat unless you are vat registered obviously if you're vat registered you could maybe put um a little bit of vat on there or something i'm not too sure how that works because i've not actually re uh, reached the uh, i believe it's eighty five thousand in the uk which is a vat threshold so don't worry about that ignore what i say about that because i'm not too experienced in that particular field quantity obviously we've got if you've got multiple quantity very self-explanatory just put 10 in there or five or whatever but we've only got one of these so i'm just going to click one you can donate to charity if you just click this button here a percentage of the sale that you choose will go to charity so that's pretty cool and then you can see your return policy down here if you are a personal seller i don't believe you have to accept returns but if you are a business seller you have to accept returns i've got it on 30 days and i've got return accepted within the first 30 days of purchase a return address will be given on the parcel so if you are a um obviously if you are a business seller you need to accept returns in the uk no questions asked i believe it's the same for the usa as well do not be one of those people who puts returns not accepted on your items when you are a business seller. And please do register with HMRC as a business um, if you are going to do this as a business, i.e. if you are looking to make profit on an item you are selling. Um, 
So that is that, just return options. Uh, and then finally, delivery details. Uh, obviously, I've got it preset to Hermes Track now. You can go on the Hermes website. I've got a little... Um, what do you call it up here, bookmark for Hermes and bookmark for Royal Mail up here. Uh, you can go, if you type in Google, uh, Royal Mail uh, prices or Hermes prices, you'll be able to pull up a list of prices for the sort of dimensions and for the weight of the parcel. So for example, I know that this item will go Royal Mail second class and I know that the postage price that I will be paying is £2.85. However, you get charged 10% fee on uh, by eBay on your postage cost. So I will actually be paying um, about £3.30. So what I'm going to do as well as that, I've got a little bit of packaging cost to cover. So I'm going to put my postage cost as £3.49 to make sure I cover the £2.85, the extra 28 or uh, sorry, the extra 34 pence fee from eBay and a little bit of packaging cost as well. So that all includes into your post. So factor in as well as the postage cost, factor in the um, obviously um, your actual fees with eBay and your, uh, you know, sort of packaging material cost. Hopefully somewhere on the screen, I will put the Hermes prices and the Royal Mail prices for you, or at least links to those websites. So you can see for yourself, what sort of the boundaries are for um, po postage prices and you can look into that at your own leisure shouldn't be too hard at all just to see with Hermes two to five kilograms it's six pound 49 or whatever it is so you know it shouldn't be too hard for you to look into that of your own accord um, but as I say I'll put some links or postage prices on the screen now or in you know just a, a minute ago so yeah you can also offer local collection and you want to set your dispatch time. This is how long, once an item sells, this is how long you uh, maximum uh, until you send it out. So if you had a one day working dispatch, if something sold, yes, sold yesterday, you would have to send it out the next day. Otherwise, eBay would give you, if you sent it out later than that, they may give you a late delivery defect, which, which can affect your seller performance. So choose one that suits you. I have mine on three working days, which is pretty high at the moment, but there is a reason for that. My local post office has just closed down and I have to travel further to get to the post office. So I'm doing fewer trips in the week to the post office. So to make sure I don't get any late deliveries, uh, late delivery defects, I actually uh, extend my uh, dispatch time for the time being. Um, but normally I would have it on one or two working days and that will uh, help sales as well. The, the, the more your dispatch time is, the longer it's going to state on the eBay listing that the buyer is going to be waiting for that item. So obviously the, the, the less dispatch time you have, the better for the customer and it means that the customer is more likely to purchase your item. So if you can, leave it at maybe one or two days. If you want to be uh, you know, really, really efficient and you're, you're really on top of your parcels, maybe click same day as well. So that's fine. Um, so yeah, and then obviously international postage, if you are opted into the GSP program, uh, then you can click that. If you're not opting into the GSP program or you've not got an invitation, which if you're likely watching this course, you won't have an invitation to the GSP program. So don't worry about that now. But if uh, you are in the GSP program, then please click that uh, box there because it will allow you to send items to an eBay hub located in the UK and then from there, eBay send the items on to the customer in another country for you. So it basically takes off all the pressure of international selling for you because as soon as it reaches the eBay warehouse in this country, you don't have any liability if that parcel to, were to go missing in the international portion of uh, that parcel's journey. So anyway, but don't worry too much about that because obviously if you're new, uh, it's not not anything major. It's nothing that you need to be compulsory. It's nothing compulsory or anything. Um, and then obviously this here, I don't enter the packaging weight or dimensions because I um, basically, uh, I basically set up my postage outside of eBay. But if you were to kind of uh, set your postage up inside of eBay, this might help you further down the line when you come to 
um, obviously purchase postage and then finally you can exclude any postage loca location so if you don't want to sell to a certain country you can exclude that country and the p anyone who's looking at your listing from that country uh, they won't be able to buy it or they might it might that li your listing might even be hidden from that person so you can see down here your fees as well which is quite handy so you can see if you've accumulated any fees um, for this kind of uh, you know for this listing if you've added a subtitle or anything like that your fees for that will show up down here and then finally you just want to click um, obviously I just want to review this listing make sure there's nothing uh, in this listing that's you know bad or anything or if it's all alright so we've got this here so just you know as a final precaution review your listing have a look at everything is it all right is it looking cool you you know is everything are you happy with the price are you happy with the duration all that sort of stuff and then finally just click list with displayed fees it will just submit the listing and there we go and you can view your listing live at that address there so success your listing your listed item you listed your item for sale. I can't even can't even say that. I'm just, my brain's going off. Anyway, so um, view your listing. You can view it here, and you can also share it on social media if you'd like to get a bit more coverage at the start. And you can see here, you can see here Davenport and Adventure Spirit Limited Edition uh, plate. You can see the condition note that we put is in there. You can see the po photos are on there. Postage price is the same. And then you can see the description there. For whatever reason, this li that that shouldn't be like that. It should be actually the description should be coming across there. So I think the listing isn't quite put on properly yet. There we there we go. That's it. So that's how it should look. So there we go. And the title should oh no maybe that's not come down any yet. But the title shouldn't be as close to that line as it is. It should be a bit further down. Um, but yeah, so there you see, you see postage and payments in there and everything. So that is your listing. That is the course done. So I'll just flip back onto me very quickly. Uh, we'll do blank scene there. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did get uh, a good bit of information out of this, I'm really, really happy. Um, I wanted to put quite a bit of effort into this course, so I hope I have done, and I hope that you obviously appreciate the effort I've put in. If you would like to see any other courses, then please do contact me with anything you would like me to do. Obviously, as I say, I do have some experience in this field, so why not do some courses on this and why not help some people out? That was what, what my thinking was. Um, and I will leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching this course and I will see you in the next one, which hopefully will be very soon. So I'll see you very soon.